Hey everybody, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So if you've ever had sick animals or an animal with an infection, you know how confusing it can be. A lot of times you jump online to try to find out what to give or you head to a forum and somebody says, ah, oh, just give them LA 200 or, oh, just give them penicillin and they'll be fine. But is that really the answer? Probably not. Stay tuned to find out why. so there's a lot of different types of infections that animals can get. They can get bacterial infections, they can get viral infections, they can get fungal infections, and they can get parasites. So it can get confusing to determine what it is that your animal needs to be treated appropriately. Obviously, if we're going to be giving medications to animals, we want to make sure that we're giving them the right medication. We're not dosing them with antibiotics if antibiotics are not appropriate. We're not warming them if they don't need to be warmed. And then we get into the real confusing part, which is which medication is the correct one to give uh, for the infection that they have. So today we're specifically going to focus on bacterial infections because that's what you're going to be dealing with the most on your farm when it comes to selecting medications and we're going to talk about it. So for instance with a respiratory infection someone may tell you to give penicillin but the reality is this penicillin probably isn't going to treat that. Um, and with an eye infection someone may tell like pink eye someone may tell you that you need to buy $14 tube of teramycin and you may be able to treat that with a little bit of penicillin depending on what it is. So what I want to do is I want to spend some time inside today talking to you about different types of infections, what they mean, and what medications are appropriate for them. So let's head into the shop and check it out. So as we talked about outside, basically with your animals when you're going to have an infection, it's going to be one of four main types of infections. Uh, this would be bacterial, viral, um, fungal, and then we get into our parasites. Um, so primarily today we're going to be talking about bacterial infections, but you know, we can talk about the viral ones as well. Um, when you think of viral infections, I want you to think of things like uh, CAE, OPP, um, things of that nature. CL is not a virus. CL is actually a bacteria. Um, when we move to the fungal infections, I want you uh, thinking things like ringworm. Ringworm is actually a fungal infection, even though uh, people originally at one point in time thought it was a worm. It is not. Um, probably the number one fungal infection that you will see, especially on sheep, especially on 4-H animals, uh, is going to be ringworm. When we get into parasites, there's a couple different classes. There's actually three different classes of parasites. Um, you get into protozoa, um, and then you have what's called helmus, and then you kind of get this all other class. Um, the all other class is talking about things like ticks and fleas and mites and mange. Um, the helmuth, when you hear the term helmuth, uh, you just need to basically think of um, worms. So that would be like your whip worm, your round worm, barber's pole worm, meningocele worm, tapeworm, things of that nature. And then when you think about protozoa, um, these are parasites, but they're single cell organisms. So this would be things like toxoplasmosis um, and our dreaded clostridium that we talk about um, at length uh, in many of our videos. Um, viruses, you know, very, very difficult to treat. Um, but the number one thing that you're going to see on your farm far and away uh, when it comes to illnesses and infections is going to be bacteria. Um, and all bacteria are not treated equally. And that is why we have a wide variety of medications to treat bacteria. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. I'm not going to talk at length about 
all of the different types of bacteria out there and what they cause, but I'm going to give you enough information uh, that you can research this on your own if you have a sick animal and make a more educated decision about the medication that you choose. So a lot of times when you go on um, forums or if you go on websites and you have a question about, well, I have a sick animal and what should I give them? Uh, a lot of times you are going to see uh, someone talk to you about this stuff right here and this is penicillin and they say oh just give them penicillin penicillin it's everybody knows penicillin it it's a good antibiotic um, and it'll just help you out with anything and everything that you have um, and that is not true uh, and here is why bacteria uh, generally speaking fall into one or two categories and those categories are what we refer to as gram positive and gram negative bacteria um, and we call them that because of uh, the way that we look at them underneath the microscope we apply some stain to them and that stain causes them to uh, turn a very specific color based on if they're gram positive or gram negative. What that tells us is if the bacteria has a outer shell to it or if it doesn't. And I am and I am seriously bringing this down a few notches for those of you that know about uh, uh, microbiology, don't beat me up too much. For all intents and purposes, what the average person needs to know is uh, that the difference between gram positive and gram negative has to do with the membrane or the shell that is around that bacteria. And different medications work in different ways. So when it comes to medications like penicillin um, that we just talked about and medications like uh, this one here, this is Thailand, uh, so Tylosin for those of you that are familiar with this. These medications work really, really well on gram positive bacteria. So what are some types of gram positive bacteria? Well, these are things like strep, um, staph infections, uh, listeria, uh, and actually even CL, the dreaded CL that we all know in sheep and goats um, is actually a gram positive bacteria. So penicillin, uh, tylosin are very, very good at dealing with gram positive bacteria. They actually work by destroying that outer shell of the bacteria uh, and that in turn kills the bacteria. There are a whole bunch of illnesses and diseases um, that are caused by gram negative bacteria. And these are a majority of the illnesses that you're going to run into uh, raising sheep and goats. So uh, respiratory infections, uh, pneumonia, uh, hoof rot, uh, a lot of the gastrointestinal issues that you're gonna run into, all of these are gram negative bacteria. So with that being said, if, you know, God forbid you have an animal that comes down with a bad case of pneumonia and you are, and we'll say that it's a uh, pasturella uh, or, um, uh, yeah, we'll just say it's a pasturella uh, type of uh, microbe that's causing this to happen, um, which is very common. Uh, with the with the pneumonia, the uh, you can give them penicillin all day long, uh, and that's a gram negative bacteria. And you can give them penicillin all day long, and it's not going to take care of it. Um, and so that's where we get into having to know the difference between, okay, what type of illness do I have? What type of bacteria causes it, and what medication is most appropriate? Uh, for it. So that is where we get into uh, tetracycline. Tetracycline is probably the most widely used antibiotic uh, for sheep and goats. And the reason for that is tetracycline does a really good job of treating both gram negative and gram positive um, bacteria. It will kill gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. As a matter of fact, tetracycline has also been shown to uh, be moderately effective against some viruses, which is extremely confusing, and we're not going to get into that. Um, and it's actually been shown to be uh, somewhat, um, somewhat helpful against 
uh, some types of protozoa as well, which again is confusing and we're not gonna get into. But what you need to know is the reason that tetracycline is so widely used is because it tends to work for a wide, wide, wide variety of illnesses. So uh, when you're thinking tetracycline, what t types of medications are we talking about? Well, we're talking about LA-200. This is generic LA-200. This is the duramycin uh, 72 200. It's just oxytetracycline. Uh, the other thing that you might uh, have uh, been familiar with is teramycin. Teramycin is basically tetracycline in an ointment form. Uh, this would be used for uh, eye infections such as chlamydia. Um, and then we have our um, aramycin. This is, again, a tetracycline-based feed additive. This is the um, aramycin 4-gram crumbles that everyone is familiar with as well. So there's three medications that are very widely used, um, and they are tetracycline-based. We also get into uh, more heavy-duty uh I guess is the best way to put it, um, medications that will treat both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Um, Nuflor is kind of uh, newer on the scene, newer-ish, I suppose. Um, it is more expensive, uh, but it seems to work a little bit better than tetracycline. It's very comparable to tetracycline in the fact that it has to be dosed up about the same, um, but it tends to do a little bit uh, better of a job. The difference is, is this has to be uh, purchased with a prescription where the tetracycline like LA-200 can be purchased over the counter. What's the problem with the new floor uh, with the tetracycline with penicillin and all these? Well, for those of you that have used them before, you know the problem is, is that they have to be dosed um, either every day or every other day. So the benefit that they've come out with is things like this drug here. This is Draxin. Um, Draxin works, uh, again, for most gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Uh, but Draxin, this 100 milliliter bottle right here, is going to run you about three hundred dollars. Um, the benefit of Draxin is, is it's a long-acting antibiotic and you can give it uh, once and uh, usually that will knock out whatever it is that you're dealing with and you never have to give another shot again. Oral, um, we talked about the four gram aramycin crumbles. Another really important one to consider is spectamycin. It can be uh, sold under the name of scour halt, spectam, uh, things of that uh, nature. So the spectinomycin, um, this is good for both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So if we carry this on hand all the time on our farm um, and we find that it works really, really well uh, for things like E. coli uh, or any type of generalized scours that the animal gets. If you are getting scours in your lambs or goats, um, uh, especially in the goat kids, and you think it may be caused by some type of bacteria, this is the go-to. Uh, if our animals get scours, we almost always treat them uh, with spectamycin. Usually one dose will um, knock it out of the park. So um, I want to I wanna go back really quickly to uh, the teramycin eye ointment, and, and I'll give you an example of why it's important to use the correct medication uh, for uh, the correct reason. So this little bottle right here can run you up to $20. It depends on where you go, but it can be $14.99 to over $20 for this little itty bitty bottle. Um, it's not even going to cost you that much for this gigantic bottle of penicillin. So most eye infections in sheep and goats is caused by staph infections. And this is gonna be just gunk that they're picking up from dust in their hay or in the ground. And it gets in there and it causes what's called conjunctivitis. It's just an irritation of the conjunctiva in the eye. Again, the staph infection is easily treatable with penicillin. It is a gram positive uh, bacteria. So you can draw up a little bit of penicillin in a three to five ml syringe uh, and squirt it in their eyes, give them a few drops in each eye for a few days and it'll clear it right up. Um, you usually don't need to spend big money to get the uh, teramycin eye ointment. Now there are eye infections that are caused by chlamydia and chlamydia is a gram negative bacteria that would require the tetracycline in order to heal up. So with eye infections, that's a prime example of you need to know what you're dealing with. You need to learn the signs and symptoms so you can know what it is that you're treating. 
and the cheapest, most effective way to treat it. Now, as you know, just like in people medicine, um, the best way to deal with antibiotics is to only use them when necessary and to use the appropriate dose and to take the dose as advised. So the best thing for you to do as an individual that raises sheep or goats is to identify what it is that you have. So if you go out and you find a sheep or a goat that has what appears to be a respiratory illness, they have a snotty nose, they have a cough, they have wheezing, the best thing for you to do is hop on the internet and do a simple search and ask Siri or ask Google, say what type of bacteria normally causes pneumonia or respiratory infections in sheep and goats? And it'll come up and it will tell you. And then you can ask, is this bacteria a gram positive or a gram negative bacteria? And it will tell you. So for instance, if you know you have pastorella, um, you say, hey Siri or hey Google, what um, what bacteria usually causes this type of, of pneumonia? And it's gonna tell you that it's pastorella. And then you say, hey, what is pastorella? Is it gram negative or gram positive? And it tells you that it's gram negative then you're going to say what type of antibiotic works best for gram negative bacteria and it's going to tell you the easiest way to remember is tetracycline new floor work really good for gram negative and gram positive the only time you're going to want to use penicillin or the thailand um, is going to be with gram positive um, so not that hard it with a little bit of typing on the computer you're going to be able to identify what type of bacteria you probably have and what antibiotic is most appropriate for you um, so that is the way to be the best you can be when it comes to using and choosing the correct antibiotics. So the next time you have a problem and you jump online because you want to know what's the best uh, antidote for what's going on, uh, you can just do it yourself and you don't have to worry about all the people out there that are trying to give you bad advice. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you find it helpful. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know. I am Tim from Lenosa Farms Specialty in Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. I look forward to seeing you again next time.